Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome to another video. Today I am doing a reading vlog. I haven't done one of these since, well I haven't done one since 2021, but like a month ago basically. More like six weeks, but anyway, feels like a long time ago and I like doing these semi-frequently. But today I am going to be reading The Lady's Mine by Francine Rivers. I am so, so happy to read this. So happy to own it, honestly. Like, I vaguely remember what it's about. I know it's set in California, as are most of her books. It's set in 1875. Like, there's that. that's basically all I know about it because I am notorious for reading descriptions online, buying the book, being so excited to read it, and then completely forgetting what it's about the minute I see it in my mailbox. So we're going to find out together but I have talked too long. I'm going to read a little bit tonight and probably talk to you tomorrow about it, once I've read enough of it to have some thoughts. Okay, see you later. Hello, it is a few days later. Let me scoot back, now I'm in frame. Okay, um, I have read seven, yes, I have read seven chapters of The Lady's Mine. I am really enjoying it so far. It feels very different from other Francine Rivers books. Like, I can still sense her writing style in the book. It's not as intense. Like, the way she describes the emotions of her characters is just, it's, um, it's there, but it's not as, like, I don't know how to really describe it. It's just, like, they seem like pretty normal people, and there's still a little, like, suspense and stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say like they're going through it, whereas characters in some of her other novels are really going through it. So that's where like it just feels a little different than some of her other books. Okay, so basically so far we are following Catherine. Yes, Catherine, who has basically been exiled from her family, not exiled, but like she's been sent away from her family in Boston to live in... Calvada, this western town in California. Her mother inherited property and basically transferred it over to Catherine. We still don't know entirely why Catherine was sent away, but we do know that it, like, it wasn't good and she doesn't really like her stepfather and she's somewhat glad to be gone from him. Uh, we come to find out as she gets to the town that her uncle did not die of natural causes. He is suspected to be murdered. I don't know if it's just because I've read a lot of books, but I feel like I already know who did it. Like, I, I have my suspect, and I'm pretty sure I know that this person did it. I don't know if that's just me, but I feel like it's somewhat obvious, and I'm only seven chapters in. So far, that's really my only complaint, is that it's somewhat easy to predict uh, her love interest so far. like he's interested in her but she's not interested in him is a little cliche in that way. Now I'm saying all of these things and I'm still like enjoying the book and I want to keep reading it but I'm just trying to be real and honest with you like these are my thoughts. I am enjoying it like I really like Catherine she's a very very sweet character. So I will see you after I've read some more. I really should change angles to make this video more interesting but I'm not because I'm too lazy. So here we go. 14 chapters through. I am past the halfway point at this point. Um, like just barely past it. And this book is so plot driven. Like that's really what I've been picking up. And I read books that are mainly like plot and character driven. Like the plot is kind of driven by the characters, but well, like, duh, that's how stories work. But um, <laughs> this one feels a lot more plot-driven than most of the books I read. Like, again, I, I said this the last time I was talking about this book. Inner emotions of the characters just, like, aren't talked about as much as I feel like they should be. Catherine and Matthias, they're, like, the main-ish characters, Catherine more so than Matthias. We're, we're getting hints of their backstory, we're, we're seeing how some of the things specifically with their like parents have shaped 
who they are and the decisions they're making and their emotions, but it's just not like this rock solid backstory that is driving them. And I feel like that's a missing quality, but the story still works. There's a lot, just a lot of events that are happening. Like, again, this is a very plot over character driven book. I'd say this is like 85% plot, 15% character at this point. Like it could change. The romance so far, it's not my cup of tea. I can definitely sense the very strong willed writing style of Francine Rivers in the character of Matthias Beck. Uh, he is very like hot headed and stubborn and uh, has a temper, just more of a like a dark and easily angered character, if that makes sense. And that feels very Francine Rivers-esque in her, the way she writes her characters, specifically those that are unsaved, especially men. Like I could draw a lot of parallels to other male characters she has written in her past books. If any of you have read the masterpiece, uh, I forget the main character or the guy's name in that one, but he was a little more like brooding and like he had a very troubling backstory, but there, I can sense a lot of parallels between that character and Matthias. So there's like that like watermark of her writing style in this book, even though it is very different than some of her others. Romance, it's not there for me. That part of the book just, it's not like progressing the way I want it to. Hopefully it's gonna get there. Like, I just don't know how it's going to work out. I really don't. Right now, I don't sense that either of the characters are good for each other, but we'll see. Like, they just don't, I don't think they would make a good couple at all. But they're the only love interests in each other's stories. Like, the only uh, plausible love interests. I don't hate the book. Like, I'm enjoying the story, but there's just a lot of questions and I would like answers. But it's a good thing it's like a quickly moving plot because it's keeping my interest. I will talk to you again once I have read some more. 22 chapters in, things are getting good. Things are starting to get really good. We're almost at the end of the book and they're like just now, just in the last chapter, I'm like, oh man this story is getting good. There was an unexpected plot twist. I feel like it was a little expected, but I, I didn't actually see it coming. I uh, was kind of a little surprised when it happened. Um, I, and I love a good plot twist, so there was definitely that, which I'm happy for. We're really getting to see more of the like soft side of Matthias Beck, who has really just been this like a very firm, solid man who's like stubborn and unchanging and like he still is, like he hasn't changed in that respect, but just his manner towards Catherine has changed and the way he goes about talking to her and relating to her has changed. I don't want to like spoil things. Obviously I can't avoid small spoilers, so just bear with me. Um, but I'm starting to see how like maybe they could be good for each other because some of their interactions are very sweet and he's very like protective of her and just wants to like make sure she's okay and he like he hurts when she hurts that kind of thing and it's really cool to see how she is starting to prove a lot of the men in town wrong about a lot of their assumptions about her. I love that. We love a good power woman moment. Love to see it. So those those are really all of my thoughts at the moment. Um, I will finish the book and then talk to you again. I'm starting to enjoy where the story is going and I'm eager to see how it is going to finish. I finished it. I put the dust jacket back on because it looks so pretty with the dust jacket. I just can't read hardcovers with the dust jackets on them. Don't know. I don't think most readers can. Let me know in the comments if you do that. Anyway, I'm done with The Lady's Mind by Francine Rivers and I really enjoyed the ending. It was... Well, okay, so I like, I did enjoy it, but it was different than what I thought it was going to be for sure. I saw the story going in multiple directions. There were quite a few like 
surprising twists at the end, but I definitely saw one of them coming like from a mile away, like basically within the first 10 chapters, first five chapters of the book, I was like, saw that one coming. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I've like read a lot of Francine Rivers and just read a lot of books in general that I could see it coming. Um, I felt uh, it was kind of obvious. The murderer, I hinted at this earlier, uh, that I thought I knew who it was, was not the person I thought it was. But so I was, I was shocked, or not shocked, I was happily surprised that I didn't get it right. And I was very, very surprised with who actually did it. There was one like scene in particular where I could really feel Francine Rivers' writing style like a lot. It's it's noticeable throughout the book in the way she writes some of the characters, but there's this one scene specifically that is a struggle between two of the characters, and I was like, oh man, I can really sense some of the deeper writing that I'm more used to from Francine Rivers. All that being said, it was a really great book, and I would recommend it. It's so sweet, and I loved the author's note at the end where she talked about like why she wrote this story instead of one of her more, instead of writing a more like typical Rivers book, um, why she wrote this one and like the questions that this book answers. And I just thought it was so genuinely sweet and simple and nice to read something that was just very lighthearted and unexpected, a little bit predictable, but that's okay. I would give this book like, three and a half, 3.75 stars. I will definitely like be including it in more recommendation videos in the future. I think it was a really great story and honestly, I kind of want a movie made out of it. I know Redeeming Love was made into a movie and I cannot wait to see that eventually. Um, but The Lady's Mind has potential to be a kind of cute rom-com. Maybe that could happen, maybe one day. I don't know, I'm not influential enough to make that happen, <laughs> but someone is somewhere. So those are all of my thoughts. Let me know if you have read The Lady's Mind or if you were planning to. I'd love to know your thoughts if you agree with me on any of it, but I'm so, so glad that I did get this book and I did read it. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, whatever that is. Until then, bye.